Well, a year ago this weekend, the people of Australia and New Zealand both made separate but very sensible democratic decisions. Here in Australia, of course, we had the referendum where Australians voted by six to four against a voice to parliament. In New Zealand, well, they voted for a new government, somewhat better than the last, uh, the, the government of Christopher Luxon. Joining me on line now to discuss that government, how they've been going in the past 12 months, is Oliver Hartwich from the New Zealand Initiative. W welcome again, Oliver. Well, just uh, give me an overview. It must have been uh, a somewhat uh, better and smoother ride this year than the previous six. Oh, it was a pretty busy period, actually, in New Zealand politics uh, this year because the new government that came in after the October election, I mean, it was only formed in late November, of course, after long coalition negotiations, they had a big job ahead of them, and that was to clean up the mess from the previous administration. And I would say the first half a year or so of that new administration was almost exclusively about cleaning up the messes or not correcting some of the mistakes. And now that they're getting towards the end of their first year in government, we can now see a bit of a positive agenda also emerging of the things that they actually want to introduce themselves. Well, you wrote an interesting piece in The Australian this week, pointing out that Chris, Chris Luxon, of course, has a, a, a background in business. He was a senior executive for most of his life. And uh, he's bringing that approach to government. How so? Yeah, Christopher Luxon is an interesting politician because he's only been a politician really for the past four years. He became opposition leader after just about a year in parliament and then prime minister really after just one term. And so he is a politician, of course, these days, but actually by his business background, he is more a corporate leader. He worked uh, previously in um, various roles for Unilever in the United States and Canada. He was for quite a few years chief exec of Air New Zealand, and he still actually treats his day-to-day -day job as if it was a corporate job. So he operates with KPIs, so key performance indicators. He operates with quarterly plans, which he issues to his ministry. And in that kind of way, he has actually created a completely different style of government. So many people say, of course, you can't run a country like a company. And there's some truth to that. But you can certainly take some management techniques over from the private sector into the public sector. And that's what Luxon does. How's the public service reacting to this? They must... Uh, I mean, it's a change of culture for them, right? To have uh, KPIs and uh, deadlines and uh, programmes set out for the next three months. Uh, they tend to work in a more leisurely, chaotic way, in my, in my experience. Are they responding well? Yeah, I think your experience from Australia is pretty much what's happening in New Zealand as well. Um, let's put it this way. I think both the public service and the new government are still trying to get used to each other. Or let's put it differently. I think the public service is learning that um, the political masters actually have a different idea of how to do things. And you can actually get a glimpse into that friction between the new government, the political government and the public service every Tuesday morning. And that is when the Prime Minister does his typical weekly radio slots, uh, one especially with Mike Hosking on Newstalk ZB. And you can hear the frustration actually in his voice. You can hear how difficult he finds it as someone used to corporate leadership dealing with the public service and just how slow it is, how cumbersome some of the processes are and how little they understand the vision of his government. But increasingly, I think he's winning that because his government is actually rolling out reform after reform. They're really going through their checklists. They're rolling out their quarterly plans. And um, it works. And actually, we've seen quite a pace, really, of reform over the past year, something that we haven't really had for a long time. In a business, of course, the, the chief executive, uh, he's the one who says what will happen and won't happen. In government, I think rightly, we, we don't really expect our prime ministers or leaders to have that same kind of top-down command type of government, do we? We expect them to consult and negotiate because that's, in the end, what enriches our democracy. Is, is he adapting to that political dynamic? Now, yeah, and on top of that, of course, what you also have to do in politics, especially in our environment in New Zealand, you have to deal with coalition partners. And there are two coalition partners for national for, for Luxon's national party. And so that's an additional complication, of course, that he now has to deal with, which he never had to deal with at Air New Zealand. But um, yes, you're right. I mean, a company is different from a country. 
And there are very few countries that you can actually run along corporate lines. I think the only exception that comes to my mind is perhaps Singapore, because the Singaporean state really behaves like a big corporation. But uh, for New Zealand, this is new. And nevertheless, I think there are some ways in which you could actually make it perform a little bit better and perhaps a little bit more like a company. So currently in New Zealand, we operate along um, Westminster parliamentary democracy lines with an independent public service. But actually, if you look at our public service, it has become a state within a state, really, over the last 10 or 20 years, often with its own mindset, often with its own rules, and no longer really with the kind of political neutrality that once upon a time characterized the Westminster-style public service. And so Luxon is right to rein them in and actually bring them back into the fold and say, no, hang on, we've had an election, we are the government, we've got a democratic mandate, and we want to do things differently, no matter where you stand. And by the way, there is a very good example in all of this. Look at the education ministry in New Zealand. I would say, actually, for the previous 20 or 30 years, it barely mattered which party was in government and who was the education minister. Because that education ministry had a very clear philosophy of its own, and it didn't really matter who was nominally in charge. The education ministry basically pushed through. Luxon and the new education minister, Erica Stanford, have changed that. They have now reasserted themselves and said to the ministry, well, we don't really care too much what you did over the last 20, 30 years, because obviously it's failed. You just have to look at our education results. We are doing things differently. And I can tell you, it took the ministry a while. It's probably still taking some of them a bit longer to figure out that actually they have to change their ways because this new government wants them to do different things. And yet, I think they're getting there. And we're, we're seeing exactly the same kinds of developments in other agencies as well. And in this way, we are now really in the process of getting fundamental and substantial policy changes across the board. The big challenge in New Zealand, I guess, as here, is a fiscal challenge that uh, spending increased during COVID is not being cut back to the same degree since COVID. We're in a, a level of much higher government spending both sides of the Tasman. Has he shown the willingness, perhaps the courage needed to tackle this problem? Well, to a degree. So over the past six months, the government actually laid off 2,600 civil servants. That's a good start. But just to put this into perspective, when Jacinda Ardern became prime minister in 2017, the public service in New Zealand was around 46,000 people. That's the core bureaucracy, not the people really on the front line. And by the time she left office, or rather her successor, Chris Hipkins, left office, we were well above 62,000. So cutting 2,600, that's a good first step. It's a start, but it's really not the end of the road. At the same time, our public finances are probably even worse than uh, what Luxon would have anticipated when he won the election. In fact, we only got figures yesterday about our public deficit, and that's running at above 3% of GDP. So there is still a massive task ahead of the government when it comes to fiscal consolidation. And frankly, government altogether just spends too much. We are currently in a region of about 40% of GDP as government spending, and that is way too high for comfort for a country like New Zealand. So we have to do something about government expenditure. We have to do something about the deficit. And this is a legacy, of course. This is not Luxon's fault. This is really what he inherited from the previous government, because the figures we are seeing now have relatively little to do with the deliberate policy choices implemented by the Luxon government, because they've only been in, in office really for less than a year. This is really just the overhang, really, uh, from the previous Ardern and Hipkins administration. And I hate to go to anything as trivial as polling, but how is he holding up in the polls? Well, it depends on who you believe. So earlier this week, we got a poll from Roy Morgan. That was relatively positive for National. It had uh, National going up to 38.5% from memory. The ACT Party, that's a small liber liberal or libertarian coalition partner, was on about 10. And then we have New Zealand First, that's New Zealand's part, uh, that's uh, Winston's um, party, Winston Peters' party. They were on 7.5%. So that was a comfortable majority. Only um, a few hours ago, though, we got a poll from the Taxpayers' Union here in New Zealand, and that picture looked a bit more positive for Labour. So Labour, in their poll, recovering to 30%, National falling to 34 But even under that poll, there was still a majority for the current coalition government. So 
Mind you, we are currently really in the middle of a recession. Economic circumstances are not too flash in New Zealand right now. And the new government of Christopher Luxon still has a majority. So we can imagine in a couple of years' time with uh, interest rates coming down, with house prices probably recovering, and probably with the economy looking a lot better, um, I think there is a very good chance that this government will get a second term because um, I think they will just ride the economic cycle and probably win in 26. 26. Well, let's hope so. Oliver, thank you for joining us. I gather you're in, uh, in Australia soon as a guest of the Centre for Independent Studies. We look forward to catching up with you then. In the meantime, Absolutely. In the meantime, thanks for joining us on Reality Bites.